Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions is brought to you by Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. I know that the spring orders are, are sold out, but uh, if you're looking for something, make sure you, uh, you give them a call uh, or visit energypowersports.ca. And if you want to learn about all the innovation and technology that's going on, make sure you sus- subscribe to their YouTube channel. Uh, just go on YouTube and search up Energy Power Sports. You'll see that familiar logo and just click the subscribe button. They also got a really active uh, Instagram page. You're going to see posts there a couple times a day. So make sure you go uh, check out our friends at uh, Energy Power Sports. And it's also brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Let me find the tile here, folks. And, uh, you know, there's one thing is a rubber track's not going to do on icy, hard pack conditions, and that's penetrate through the ice. And that's where the fast track snowmobile traction products comes into play. These studs are, are awesome, and uh, they, they're scratch pattern templates that you get with every kit. Is, uh gives you the optimum scratch patterns for maximum traction, stopping, and handling on ice and snow. Uh, go to their checkout, add your studs, your backers, your nuts, and uh, throw a toolkit in that cart. And uh, if you use the coupon code SNOW, S-N-O-W, that toolkit is absolutely free. So check out FastTrack.co, F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C.co. There's no K in track. It's FastTrack. Co, and you're you're going to see more of them when we get to the fan photos. And today we got Roger on from uh, Elk Lake Wilderness Lodge. How you doing, Roger? Good, Gary. And yourself? Awesome, awesome. So, uh, have you had a good winter up there? We've had a fantastic winter. It started a little bit late, but it looks like it's going to run for quite a while yet. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's check out. Let's check out who else is in the in the chat here, and then we'll get going on this. We got. Pro Polaris Rob, he says, good evening, ladies and gents. And he gives us a beer emoji. Olive Garden, Garden Gnome's back. He says, hello and happy Monday, everyone. Mike Gooley's says, hey, guys, how was your weekend? Uh, Renegade X, he was out with Pro Polaris Rob on the weekend up in Kirkland Lake. Hope they had a safe weekend and a fun weekend. Uh, he says, hello, everyone. He's got a whiskey glass going. Uh, he, Pro Polaris Rob says it was awesome. And uh, Dominator's in there. Uncle Buck's there. He says, good evening, everyone. Odie the Sledding Car Guy's in there. Angelo D just hopped in the house. He says, hey, everyone. Oh, they're starting to come in. We started early tonight. We usually don't start right at 7. <laughs> we don't. We're always late. You know, last week was really late. I had uh, I had major technical difficulties, so I wasn't even sure we were going to get the show off the ground, so... Anyway, for the for the people watching, we have uh, Whaley Boy says cheers, guys. For the people watching, uh, we have uh, a lot of American viewers and listeners. Tell everybody whereabouts you are located, you know, in Ontario. So we are 45 minutes west of New Liskard. So from the bottom of the hill in North Bay, you're an hour and a half from our door. So it's, it's pretty, pretty close. Five and a half hours from the GTA. Oh, nice, nice. So it doesn't take that long to get to... to uh, to, to your uh, resort and what makes it unique uh, it like from what I know you guys have mecca snow every year why is that from what I understand we're on the incline of the Ispatina Ridge which is the highest ridge in Ontario so we typically get the same amount of snow about the same time as as the boys in Cochrane do where New Liskard sits a little bit lower. So when you hit New Liskard in those open fields, they may not have snow. But as you start to head west, we start to come up that ridge and we start to get snow. So you can usually start here and head up through Timmins and Cochrane right at the start of the year. We're about as far about as far south as you can go to get snow early. Right on. And and it's 
it doesn't necessarily uh, cater to trail riding. You are well known for the backcountry off tra off trail riding as well, correct? Yeah, probably about thirty to thirty five percent of our guests now don't even touch a trail. We've brushed some some trails back to the logging roads, and and away you go. There's back lakes. We've put some fire pits out on some islands on some lakes. Yeah, it's it's pretty substantial. We've also got a, a local fellow that if you want to do some back lake ice fishing, if he's available. He'll take you through some pretty funky junctions and get you back into some back lakes to do some fishing and um, get you stuck if you want to get stuck. And yeah, it, it's really, really cool. Some of the pictures you'll see were from this year and then from two years ago when we had a lot of snow as well. Right on. And yeah. typically, typically, when does your season start? Are you are you starting in December or or? The earliest we started was December 18th. That was a bit of an anomaly. Uh, this year, we had riders in doing off-trail stuff. The trails weren't open, but we had guests in here December 23rd this year. Right right on. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then you, you were telling me off-air how late that you go in the season, which is pretty impressive. Let everybody know that. Yeah, we had all our groomers in the other day for lunch for a, a big thank you for them. Um, everybody, everybody that rides knows how much work they put in, and it's insane. Um, but they think they'll be grooming till the end of the first week of April here. Wow, is a that's awesome. <laughs> that's the <nice. laughs> Yeah. So as far as your resort goes, I, we've got some pictures of it coming up. But tell us about the resort itself. Uh, how big is it? How many cabins do you have, and and that type of thing? So we have ten cottages. They range everywhere from a one bedroom up to a three bedroom cottage that sleeps uh, sleeps six. We can throw a cot in there if you want to. Uh, we've had guys come in and go, I don't care. They bring air mattresses. It's crazy. So we've got 10 of them. And then we've got a pavilion out the back where guys will hang out at night, have a few beers, throw some darts. There's a fire pit out the back. It usually houses our hot tub and sauna. But yeah. didn't fire it up this year because of COVID. And by the time we everything was understood about the rules, it just wasn't worth opening. So it, we left it closed this year. Yeah, so it's. Did you say it's a hot tub and a sauna, or or either or? One, one. We have one of each. We have two saunas. One down by the water, which is wood fired, uh, and a infrared sauna out in the pavilion, right next to the hot tub. Oh, okay, I just didn't know whether it was depends yeah. on how much beer you how much beer you spill in the sauna. It becomes a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. <right? I> know. <laughs> <laughs> And the, did, did you, I, sorry, I was kind of distracted there. I had a text come in. Uh, did you, did you say how many cabins that you actually have there? I did. We have 10. So mm. we can, we can sleep 42 if all the beds are full. Um, we've had 46 in camp. So like yeah. I said, guys, just, they just want to ride. They want a, That's a awesome. good place. It's comfortable. Um, we've got an old shop on here. All my tools are out there. It's got a wood, wood furnace in it. So guys are out there two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, wrenching on sleds. So they're good to go the next day. That's usually where the three o'clock in the morning party happens is in my shop. Okay. So Cor Corey Brock's in the house. He just came in. He says, I want to go. So <laughs> we will talk. You've got to get Corey and I up there before the end of the year. How's that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You hear that, Corey? We're, it's a deal. Yeah. Noons, <laughs> has been, yeah. Noons has been here a few times. Yeah. He's a good uh, cat. He's been on the show. Oh, he's, he's awesome. What, yeah. a, what a great guy. Like any, any knowledge you have, he'll, you know, you need, he'll share it with you. Yeah, for sure. I love that guy. Yeah. And uh, even though he's, even though he drives a Polaris, we will, uh, <laughs> we'll forgive him. It will forgive him for that. He did have link accessories on the back, so he's almost there. So <laughs> I see you have your team Arctic hat on. Uh, what, what do you ride? I just, well, I own a snowmobile resort, so I don't ride. Oh, that's true so. too. Yeah. yeah. So what I did, did you ride one. before you gave your life away? Actually, I did buy one this year. My buddies own Tomiskimi Power Sports, and they're Arctic Cat dealers. But they yeah. had a they had a trade in a 2020 Polaris Titan. I nice. couldn't say no because I wanted either the Expedition or I wanted the Titan, which is perfect for you know pulling guys off the trail or. So yeah, they had a yeah thousand kilometers. I couldn't say no. Fully loaded. Wow. They, they hooked me up. That's good. Yeah. And that, yeah. like for your area where you have that much snow, you, you really can't go wrong. Can you? No, you with can't. That, with that sled. Like that's the yeah. thing. So, and, yeah. and those expeditions and those Titans on the trail, they're, they're fantastic sleds. 
Yeah, that's great. Kevin Robertson's in the house. We had him on last weekend. He says uh, they call they's telling Dominator they call it a mud flap for late season riding. We had amazing snow up north. Like like I was saying off air. Um, sounds like uh, it sounds like Pro Polaris and Renegade X had a good time up in Kirkland Lake, but man, you didn't have to go that far because the trails around Kearney and Huntsville and Dorset were mint, mint, mint. They got a lot of snow in the last couple of weeks. They did, eh? Mm-hmm. My wife and up why were up there a month ago, and I was sad because there is such a thin base and thin snow, and then we had that warm up, and I thought for sure that was going to do them in. It okay. was the worst year I've ever seen for snowfall, and it seems to have come back. I mean, it's not like it usually is right now, but it's it was good on the weekend. You're going to see pictures of uh, – I know Odie sent in some pictures as well. And Yep. Uh, Mark Schrammel says that Minnesota riding is still good in northern part of the state. So, yeah, he's probably looking at the same snow we are, right? So, yeah, I yeah, think so. That's pretty cool. But uh, what is – um? how does it work for uh, for – like accommodations at your place is how much is a cabin to rent for people if they're interested in coming up? So we only do one package. So it includes breakfast and supper and we work a little differently than most do. So we're $149 a night per person and that's breakfast and supper. Included. So that's put, great. Yeah, We put all of your breakfast stuff in your cottage, bacon, sausage, bread, the whole nine yards. So when you get up in the morning, you don't have to go anywhere. It's all there. Cook it yourself. Start your day when you want, and then you let us know what time you want to eat at night, and then we bring it right to your cottage. So you you sled in, yeah, have a shower, grab a beer, and then we bring the food right to you. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And are you good cooks or what? Like you said, our it was food. steak. You said it was steak night tonight, so we missed yeah. that. Yeah, you know. we, yeah. Our our food. If you check our reviews, our food is our food is insane. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I know. I, I had a friend up there a couple of weeks ago and he loved it. He said it was great. So I don't yeah. think I, I've heard anything bad about your resort. So that's why I, I reached out to you to come on and, and talk about it. Cause it's uh, especially now we're getting into season, like we're, we're done here in Southern Ontario. So if anyone's looking for a place to go and you don't want to kind of go all the way up to Cochrane, right. you, can, you can find awesome snow, you know, just South of it. So, oh, and the nice thing is, like, you can get from here to Cochrane. So, you know, we get a yeah. lot of guys do that. They'll come and drop here and they'll either stay the first night or they'll come early, head up to Cochrane, and then come back and stay here for a night or two and do these trails. That happens all the time. That's neat. How, how long of a ride is that? How, how much time would it take to do that? Is that a day or? You know, you know what? Like, everybody asks that question. I hate giving that answer. Some guys like to take their time, stop, rest. I mean, we have, we have guys that do that in, in four and a half, five hours. We got guys that take 10, 11 hours to do the ride. But those guys are stopping every, you know, like I would, every half hour. Yeah. Stretch, you grab a coffee at Timmy's and the next one in, in Smooth Rock. And so, yeah, you can do it in, in six hours without too much trouble. Right on. Now, is there lots of, is there sights to see there too, as far as lookouts and and uh, monuments or anything like that? Do you, are, are you renowned for... For any famous stuff yeah we've, we've got a fair bit of stuff in this area we've got oh we call the the bear cave so it's a an old mine you walk right in and somehow magically a an old stuffed bear got in the very very back of this mine so <laughs> that's we, awesome yeah we don't tell people it's there we just tell them where to get there and make sure they walk to the very very back so that's of course, awesome it's dark, yeah and there's some abandoned mines you can get to in the espatina ridge uh, the 107 C goes up to the top of it. So once you're up in the top, you can see, yeah, you can see forever. Um, right it's, on. it's really cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I haven't looked uh, in detail at your photos, but th there's a, a lot of really good photos coming up. So yeah, that's really cool. And where, where do people find you? Like how do people get a hold of you? Um, if they want to, if they want to find out where Elk, Elk Lake Wilderness Lodge is. Well, the best part is just look up, you know, Elk Lake Wilderness Resort on, and if you just type in Elk Lake, it'll probably come up first. It'll come up, it, it comes up now before the, the town of Elk Lake itself does, which is, which is pretty that's, cool. That's yeah. really good. So it's Elk, it's elklakewilderness.com, right? Yeah. And then do you yeah. have any Instagram pages or anything like that that you, uh, we, do. That you we have, a, we have a, a Facebook page connected to, and you know, everything's on there. Everybody's posting. 
on Facebook and they're posting on pictures of their stay. And I mean, we get as many posts of our, our food, pictures of our food as we do everything else. That's a good sign though. Yeah, That's a really is. good sign, right? It is. So, yeah, that shows you're doing something right. Yeah. But, uh, no, that's that's really cool. So yeah, and I'll I'll post a link in the comments uh, after the show is over, and uh, make sure that people know where to click that link to to book it. And do you get many American tourists coming up to to ride there? I mean, not the last couple of years, but prior yeah, to last that, couple years. we we did. We had we had a, a number of them. Um, it seems that that Cochrane is that's that's where the they want to go. Um, yeah. They're investing that kind of money. And, you know, down in Erie, they get snowed. Buffalo, they get snowed. When they don't, um, they want to be guaranteed guaranteed snow. And you know, Cochrane has it. Um, we're, the, we're the second best guaranteed spot for sure. Yeah. What would be the advantage of Elk Lake Wilderness Resort over a Cochrane trip? We're two and a half hours closer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's, that's so, huge, especially with gas at, you know, two bucks a liter for diesel in your truck that's a yeah. that's a big thing so i know the um, guy came in here today and said he paid two dollars and 24 cents a liter for diesel and i couldn't believe it yeah yeah that's it's crazy propolaris rob says elk lake the cochran is 254 kilom 254 kilometers so that's a good ride that's a that's a great day out you know it is it is you it's, even add to it yep yeah, yeah. so has cool. rob done it i'd love I, to hear I, I've, I've seen posts from him on different things and has he done that ride yeah, well, if you chime in there, Pro Polaris Rob, if you've done that actual ride and if you have any tips for anyone else, that's pretty cool. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So he's from our neck of the woods. He drives up there, and uh, I, I was trying to hook up with him last weekend, but it didn't work out. But yeah, okay. so no, that's pretty cool. We'll, we'll wait. It'll, it's a little bit delayed to get an answer yeah. on that. So we'll we'll see if he, uh, if he throws an answer out. But you want to check out some photos from the fans? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is my favorite part. We're going to get right into this. Hang on a second. And photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Check out Fast Track dot co there you go so i made you small there so we can Perfect. get really focused in on the pictures so not not to not to shame you or anything there you know it's nothing against you it's me you know so i just uh to, just wanted to start this out and, and tell you guys about fa my faith in humanity is is over the top you know i i get a lot of good uh compliments and rich does too from fans every week and and uh we had a we had a fan that I've never met before, and his name's Stephen Lavoy, and he he purchased a he's in New Brunswick, and he purchased and that's on the East Coast, so he per, that's two two or three uh, provinces away. So if you're in the states, it's like pretty far, and it's I think it was two day it's a two day run, but he bought a, a Lynx. Uh, boondocker from our friend John Luke at Energy Power Sports. So we ordered it and came in to pick it up. And he was supposed to come to the beer spa with us to ride. And he uh, he just didn't. Um, well, actually, we the beer spa was canceled because the weather warmed up. And he ended up coming to pick his, his – he actually had them hang on to the boondocker for that weekend. He was going to pick it up. And then he was going to stay with Neil Owen and crew and in and, uh, and Neil's cabin. And – the uh since we had to cancel that because of the weather he just took the boondocker back to new brunswick and uh, never to be seen again well he's emailed and stuff and he said he left me something at the dealership and left me a box and i never i hadn't gotten back in never thought too much about it and he's a big collector so he was talking about leaving me collectibles like to and then i'd send them back to him like catalogs and magazines and I was like, no, don't do that. I don't want to be responsible for, for anything that's of value that you need back and blah, blah, blah. So I get a I get a message that he left me something at the dealership. And I said, well, I'll get it next time I'm in. And I left it and I left it. And I don't know really you tune much into the show, but I, I've been having this scavenger hunt all year, Roger. And 
I, by losing, I lost a trail seat bag. I left the bag open and lost all the contents out of it. I, I've lost probably $500 worth of crap throughout Ontario on snow and Kirkland Lake on snowmobile trails. So this all ties into the story. So Sherry from Energy Power Sports had come by uh, last weekend and she brought the box with her. So I get it in the kitchen and I open up this box and there's a sheet of cardboard on top and I take a picture and I just go like, should I be afraid of what's in this? Like, is there a family of kittens that may have died? Cause it's been weeks that I've, I've haven't got this thing. And, uh, I, I, he never responded. And then I, I go ahead and open it up and the bugger got me a new trail seat bag. That's nice. It's real nice. And you know, what's even better I opened it up. I didn't even open it at first. I, I was just like kissing it and hugging it. And I spent the night with it in bed. And, and then, <laughs> and then the next morning I get up and I go to put my, uh, my, cause I lost a brand new, uh, to towing new in the box, never even opened the box, toe straps. I lost one set of toe straps, which we used once. And then I, rep I bought, I lost those early in the year. And then, and then I replaced them with a brand new set that I never even took out of the box. I just threw them in my other bag and then accidentally left it unzipped and away they went. They decided they didn't like riding with me anymore. And uh, so I went to put it in this bag and there's a whole whack of stuff in the bag. Like he's so nice. Yeah, he uh, he gave me some, uh, we, we, we both had, uh, I had I had two, two Skidoo 50 edition snowmobiles and he has two of them. So he gave me a 50 edition hat. He gave me a promotional bag that um, that uh, that came with the 50 edition skidoos. He gave me a pin, a collectible pin, and he he actually pinned 200 bucks, 50 dollars for each sled to the hat. Like it's such a nice gesture. He gave me a couple of ornaments with mud brats on them. Like I was just I, I had tears in my eyes when I opened that bag. It was already blown away. And when I opened the bag and seen all the crap in there, I went, man, like this is a guy I, I haven't met yet. I, if you put him in a lineup, I wouldn't be able to pick him out. And uh, we've talked on the phone a lot. I, I sent him some collectibles earlier in the year that I wanted to ha him to have. It was a spring, a spring jacket from 2009 um, that, that he had never seen before. And I ended up getting my hands on one. So I said, just name your price. I just need you to cover shipping and it's yours. And we worked that out. That was one of our first kind of friendly transactions we did. And we just stayed in touch. He watches every week. He's, he doesn't have the technology, so he, he doesn't get in the chat with you guys. But he, um, he, uh, he just blew me away, man. And I, I can't wait to ride with him again. And yeah, like Mark Schrammel, super cool. Uh, Canadians are awesome, Ghoulie says. Like, yeah, it's just super nice. Like, that's the thing. He's just, I, I'm just uh, floored, like, that, that bag is expensive. That's not a cheap bag. And that's why I didn't really replace it, you know? And it's like, and I missed it. I just totally missed it. So the funny thing is he messaged me. I went to put it on the sled on Saturday. And, uh, and you know, and my plan was to ride with it and do a video on it and do this announcement in the video, all that stuff. And I couldn't get it to lock onto my sled. Oh. So I didn't want to take a chance. So I just left it off. So he messaged me on Sunday night saying, Hey, how'd the bag work out for you? I go, I didn't actually use it, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but oh well. And I was so mad that I had to use the old the old rear bag because I just hate it. Zip okay. the, the latches broke on it, and that's the one that I lost everything out of. So yeah, but that's uh that's good. Corey actually replaced my toque that was in this that I lost. So thank you, Corey Brock. So I am almost, Oh, um, sled five one nine. I had some of his neck gaiters from jet, uh, jet blue ice melter. Um, and there's a few other things in there from him. He actually sent me a package after he and I rode and, uh, I've got that replaced. So I'm almost even Steven now, you know? So the, 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 uh, the, yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to say he had to take Bullwinkle to the dentist to be installed. Yeah. Um, Bullwinkle's my sled. 
but yeah, I was just, I was just floored anyway. Thank you, Steven. I know you're watching and man, it's too much, buddy, but we'll make sure, uh, I'll make sure that is the bag that, uh, when you and I ride together, that, uh, that it's still on the sled, you know? So it's, uh, it's good. It's going to go on the gen five. That's for sure. You're like following a yard sale. It is. It's totally true, man. Like, and, uh, I mean, the one time I went out riding, I started seeing stuff in the trees that looked familiar. It was my stuff. <laughs> I'm usually at the back, right? So when Mike from Sled 519 rode with me, he he, I had the maps and he didn't. So he rode behind me and he goes, it's okay, Gary. I, I'll pick up whatever you drop. And I said, well, if I drop anything, it's your responsibility. It's your, it's your fault. So, yeah. So there you go. But uh, anyway, do you know where this is, Roger? Is that the Tomogamy Fire Tower? No. This, do they have oh. one like this? Yeah. Well, I got to go see that. This is Dorset. Dor that's Dorset's? Yeah, yeah. So you used to be able to climb up it. You used to be able to uh, go up the stairs. You can see them there. But since COVID, they closed it down. Um, Drew thinks that it might not open at all again because those are, uh, he said those are, uh, are um, what is it? The, the five, the five network. I don't okay. know. And he said that th those antennas on there are, are, are like whatever it is, five. And he said that th there'll be radiation, but who knows? He might be wrong. So anyway, my friends were all stand sitting there on the sleds and I climbed up this big tree with my camera and took a shot of that. So getting really good at climbing trees. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a few sleds climb trees this year too. Not so good. <laughs> I don't want to do that. No. no. So the Bullwinkle cracked chipped the tooth because he uh he he ran in the back of uh of my other sled, but I I took him to the dentist, so he's all fixed up. That's Bullwinkle there, the red one. Okay. The second one, and you can see he's an angry moose. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta get him up to your resort and then you, he can scare away all the elk. That, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is this is the ice caves. This is a part of them anyway. So I'll have a video on that soon. We haven't we haven't gone to the ice caves in years. We've been kind of boycotting them because it's been too touristy. But we got there this year, and it, man, and what a crappy, crappy ice cave! Somebody took a dump in it. <laughs> oh. it's, it was an awesome ice cave, but somebody took a steamer in it. So we we can't we yeah yeah so. I mean, how's that, right? Like, talk about crapping where you eat. Like a real nice resort, a real nice destination, and you can walk in and, you know, and, you know, sit in the ice cave, have a beverage if you want, and there's a fire pit out front, and someone goes and uses it as a washroom. Yeah. Yeah. Michigan Outlaws is laughing about that. Yeah. So... Yeah, we had a we had a hoot. So this is our fan Angelo D. He's in the chat. He says this is just north of Mont Tremblant, 980 meters up. Amazing views in Quebec. And then he uh, the next shots Dorset Trail two weeks ago. He said it was a mint day of riding. Him and his brother Andrew with some great views in Quebec on the 63 Highway Trails. So I think that is from a tower or a deck of some sort that he's looking at on the on the left. That's a great shot. And then Angelo's the one on the with the red jacket there on his on his sled with the wrap on it. Okay. Yeah. He's probably been at your place. He sees the whole world by sled. He puts on a lot of miles every year. Yeah, a lot of guys do. Yeah. And there's the Algonquin Shelter. I told my buddy Grant, and we gave them the tour of the, like the Dorset Tower, the Oxton Rapids, the the ice caves. I said, if we would have made the Algonquin shelter in there, you would have never had come back to Huntsville. You know, we got, we covered the trifecta of, uh, of everything. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, those trails were mint. That's Dorset area. That's nice. And David Molden. So, Hey, listen, everybody in the chat too, and people watching this after the fact. So I didn't make it on to, the vintage snowmobile lovers podcast last Thursday, but I am going to be on this Thursday night at 9 PM. So watch my social channels for that. And, uh, I'm going to be putting together a collection of vintage pictures like this one. Um, so if you have any vintage stuff that you want me to share on that podcast, send it to fan photo at mudbrats.com here. Let me put that up there. 
and uh, and send it to me by uh, by Thursday morning if you can, and I'll make sure that uh, that we include you on the um, it, on the podcast there. So I want to bring my fans. I want to rock his show with with my fans showing showing their vintage love as well. So this is a '73 snow jet and sleigh. He gets a lot of attention. It's an unmolested original, and he's from Wyndham, Maine. That's a beauty. That almost looks like a skidoo skaboose. Did you ever have any old old girls like that? I my buddy had a snow jet growing up, and then he went to a ski rule. Yeah, nice. He switched to the Kawasaki after that. And then yeah, we've we've between my buddies and I, we've we've had them all. But yeah. Yeah, good the, memories. The ski roll was nice. That was a nice sled. Yeah, they were ahead of their time though, right? They were the first of the aluminum tunnels and the shocks on the outside of the tunnel. And somebody else yeah. said something they were they were an innovator of. I can't remember what it was. They they good chat about it last couple of weeks ago when we had the Michael from the snowmobile vintage snowmobile lovers uh, on to chat, but yeah, make sure you send in some vintage stuff of your sleds and away we go. Dominator sent me in some too. So I'm going to show these as well. Uh, he says, Gary, I ran into these a few years ago at Thunderbirds bar in St. Germain, Wisconsin goes along with discussion last week about rare odd sleds. Yeah, that's neat. That looks like a pink panther mobile or bat. What if Batman had a snowmobile right there? Yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah, Manta with a car steering wheel in it. I wonder if it's got a gas pedal like a car, too. Can't really see in there. But yeah, good lord, that's pretty cool. That is. Yeah, and there's a, there's a nice panther. Yeah. There's a sled that, uh, that I showed pictures of hanging in a tree. And I'm going to show that because I was trying to find out what sled it was. I should have put that picture in this week. And I think it's an Evinrude, the, the picture. I showed it a few weeks ago. Um, but it's it's got a slightly different hood than an Evinrude. But I'm going to get them to identify it. they got a huge following. So hopefully someone will be able to pick out what the sled is for us. But. Look at the taillights on that sucker and the gas tank back there. If you get run into on that thing from, from behind, it's like driving a Ford Comet, right? Yeah, the old Massey Ferguson's had the tank in the back just like that as well. Yeah. Um, Uncle Buck knows that Manta. He said he didn't think they came in black. It might have been... Uh, it might have been, yeah. Someone's Marty's motor has motorized ma'am said, yeah, mana had foot pedals in it. That's pretty cool. You gotta love these seats. I think Arctic Cat should put these on their new sleds. Mm -hmm. Why not? You could make it a little bit more modern, right? You could make yeah. it not so cheesy, but still do it. Yeah. Uncle Buck tried to find info about it, but didn't know anything about them. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uncle Buck, send me in some vintage shots next for next, uh, for Thursday night this week. And make sure you tune in because I'll be on that show at 9 p.m. It's late, you know. It's past my bedtime. I gotta get my beauty sleep. So the, uh, and I think that a picture of Roger here. They must have been on your resort. Is that you there walking across the trail? It is. Getting ready to deliver <laughs> supper. <laughs> Going in for steak night. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the, hey, Gary, I thought I would send in some late photos of a trip I took a few weeks ago in northern Maine. Best trails I've ever been on. He put on 1,600 miles that weekend in total. He says, thank you. So I love the Yeti there. That's pretty neat. I love seeing stuff like that on the trails. You know, you're ripping along and you see something like that. Yeah, Uncle Buck's going to send me in some stuff on his old Rupp. I love it. I like that bridge. The St. Germain Snowmobile Bridge, Oxbow. I can't read that other name, Snowmobile Club. 2003, they built that. It looks dry, but I think I'd still cross it. No, pro no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm covering up their picture there in the corner. A couple of nice sleds there. 
Looks like Polaris and a skidoo in the back. And then Neil Owen sent this in. He says, Gary, the first picture is the sled lock up at the Quality Inn in Edmonston. Isn't that impressive? Is that what your place looks like? No, no. <laughs> yeah, we don't need a sled lock up here. No, no. Individual garages holds two sleds that you drive in and out. And then he said the next picture is uh, the is the relay at Baker Lake. Not what I was expecting. Gives you a new expectation for future re relays. And the third picture is, is that of signage at every intersection on New Brunswick trails. He was in New Brunswick this weekend. Includes trail numbers, amenities, hotels in every direction. And then he dropped into Paul's place. Um, so that's the amenity sign. Look at that. That's neat. Yeah, that is really that is really cool. We're hard pressed to get uh, to get a direction sign with accurate mileage on it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I love that. And then he says he popped into Paul's place, and he said he's not sure who Paul is, but he's got a hell of a view. So this is a lookout there in New Brunswick, and uh, and that's some of the views that he was seeing on that. Isn't that wow. incredible? Yeah, there's a few different angles, but I I. Uh, I only got a couple pictures in there. And then uh, Odie, the sled and car guy, he says he got to go for one last ride yesterday to get this picture. I hope everyone's season was great. And this is my son, Drew. This is his uh, his commemorative ditch sign. So we went and visited there. We took So we did see a trifecta. We took Grant and, and the boys there to check that place out. But yeah, my son rolled his sled there uh, last winter. So kind of wrote it off. We got it back on the trail again, but uh, he, uh, we, I put that sign up. So it was a big surprise for him. So I'm glad Odie was back on the trail though. He blew the clutch out in that thing. I thought his season was over there. So I, I'm happy to see he's back in the, on the snow. Yeah. Is it still called mileage if it's in kilometers? Yeah, we call it mileage. We're still old school that way. But we don't ask us to convert it because we'll have to reach and get our calculator. Yeah, that's right. Canadians don't have enough fingers or toes or digits to to do the conversion in their head. Yeah. Kilometrage, kilometrage is, doesn't have a very good ring to it. No, you're right, Michigan outlaws. I can't even say that. Yeah. And then this is uh, Rodney's story. He said, uh, here's some pics from our four-day tour. He did 1,100 kilometers. That's like eight or 900 miles, I guess it would be. Kilometers. That was a nice resort. And here's lots of snow. I don't know which one's him. I, he's a new fan, so that's a nice little Yamaha there. And this is the crew. Looks like a bunch of good old boys. Yeah. After and one good old girl, good young girl there. That's kind of cool. Looks like they're having a good time. Their wine glasses are empty though. We should fill them up. I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, another picture. I like these shots. That was that wouldn't have been them off trail ride, and I, I bet. And here we go. It's your time now. We get to look at some of your pictures. You can explain what they are. So Elk Lake Wilderness Resort. So check out elklakewilderness.com. So is this typical of, uh, of your, your, uh, your riding on trails here? That's, that's off trail. That's, oh, uh, that's off trail. That's yeah. Right. That's one of the logging roads. Yeah. Heading back. That's heading South heading towards. Yeah. It's heading South towards North Bay. And how many uh, how many kilometers of, of logging roads or off trail experience do you have? Uh, right from here, without going too too far, you can do about four hundred kilometers of off trail logging roads right from here. Wow! So you really don't need to like if you didn't have a permit, like if you're coming from an area that you you know required you to get an OFSC permit or whatever you wouldn't even really need one you could actually have a good time at your resort without it if you're coming from the US yeah absolutely yeah there's lots of people that do that wow that's great another good shot so that's the that's heading heading down the Ispatina ridge so that's you were that's about halfway down so yeah that's that's 
that's a great area to ride. That is actually a groomed trail. Okay. Now it's groomed by OFSC, that one? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. The, um, when, when you say it's logging roads, is it actually active in the winter or is it not active? Like, is it, is it something where they're scraped down from or packed down from the logging trucks or is it pretty much powder and you can ride to your heart's content? So there's so many logging roads around here that the off trail stuff, you can always avoid um, where they are currently logging and the logging companies and the log, the mill up here, Ecom, they, they work fairly closely with the clubs and the logging companies try to leave as much snow as they can safely for their truckers. They've even gone out and pulled snow back onto the roads um, so that the clubs can extend their season. It's hard. Everybody's, you know, everybody's fighting for for a dollar, and the loggers have to work, and we have to make money. So, um, but yeah, there's always, always tons of logging roads to ride. That's sweet. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's them. So that's obviously a you know a plantation they've planted. That those are probably you know ten or fifteen year old trees, and and he's on his way down the ridge. That's awesome. Yeah. Is this just a guest or is this one of your, uh, your uh, workers or? No, this is just a guest that sent in one of the photos. That's cool. Yeah. yeah so, I, so, some of these pictures, I, I you had sent me the raw, a photo, a fishing photo or folder. I put some of those pictures in here as well because they're pretty cool. They're, I don't know whether I'm allowed to show them or not. Yeah, um, you are. So okay, okay perfect. Our, yeah. yeah, a lot of our guests will do uh, – some back lake fishing while they're here. So instead of, you know, going riding all day, they'll take a fishing rod and ice auger and they'll they'll go 50 or 60 kilometers, do some off trail stuff and and hit some back lakes. That was that was actually this year uh on a back lake about 20 kilometers from here. Nice. Yeah. And do you have all the equipment for people to use like if you ride up there and you go, "Hey, listen, we want to we want to go fishing today." Yeah, we do. Um, it depends. Like right now, we've got about four feet of ice. So unless you've got an ice auger with you, um, I mean, if you want to stay relatively close, you can take our gas one. But most guys, they'll come up prepared to to do some off trail and bring their own stuff up. But yeah, we do have some stuff we can lend out. Yeah, four feet's tough to chip through with a butter knife, right? It's really tough. Our auger just the handles hit the other day just as it went through. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen ice that thick. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So these are the same guys the next day. That's a good haul. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. They they were they came up to do off trail riding and then they discovered this. And yeah, that that ended the off trail riding. They just fished. That's great. <laughs> no, that's cool. I yeah. love stories like that, right? Yeah. But here's your off trail experience right here. <laughs> yeah. Um just to give you an idea how much snow they get. This was a fellow that just said to our guide that was taking the mice fishing, um, show me where the deep snow is. And the guide says, how stuck did you want to get? And he was like, well, get me stuck. Well, that took about eight seconds. And there he is. <laughs> and then your guide left. I'll see you back at the lodge. Yeah, well, he got <laughs> a couple of good pictures of it. <laughs> <laughs> You got some pictures. That's what you have to do as a good friend, right? Oh, yeah. Just take yeah. pictures and ridicule them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was This is him going into the mess, I guess. I think, that's I think the it picture. was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good times. <laughs> uh, that's, one of, that's one of our cottages, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that. That's great. Yeah. They're big. So are they all the yeah. same, or do you have different size cottages? Um, our three bedrooms are laid out pretty much the same. So um, some of them sleep five, some sleep six. Like I said, we've, we've had guys that just, they just keep coming back. We've got one fellow in camp now. This is his third five day vacation here this year. They just keep coming back and they'll bring new guys and yeah, the normally four or five guys and it turns into eight. So they'll just pile into a cottage and yeah, That's it's awesome. It is. It is awesome. Well, that's a, that's a testament to how well of a job you guys do, and and the price isn't that bad, you know. When you compare it, when you compare it, especially if you compare it to what a ho a crappy hotel is, I think we paid more for that than that dumpy Super Eight in the Kirkland Lake. 
You know what I mean? And we didn't get food with it. Yeah. Well, if you count the, the, the food you find on the floor when you walk in, I guess it was catered, you know. It was catered, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that's, another that's... good stock. I love it. <laughs> yeah. They're just burying them this year. That's that's a short track, though. You had no business being in there. Well, here's the beauty of it. Because they're logging roads, the guys with the short tracks, they can get out there. So they go out, pretend they're running long tracks. They're in five feet of snow. And so when they get stuck, they're standing on a solid base. Oh, yeah, so, nice. So you're not really stuck. So all these guys with short tracks that want the, the long track deep snow experience, they're getting it. So yeah. it's that's what's really cool. Like you're standing on a road, you get stuck, you wiggle it out and away you go again. This case, <laughs> he thought he would try what his buddies did off the trail. Yeah. Not a good idea. It, it looks like he's turning it around to go the, back the same direction he came in on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably not a bad idea. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Corey Brox asks if, uh, do you cater to ATVing as well? Absolutely. So it's not a market that we had gotten into to start with. Um, but as the snowmobile crowd starts to discover all this off-road uh, backcountry stuff, we're seeing a lot more of it. We've already taken, oh, I think eight reservations for spring and fall for ATVing this year. There's all the abandoned mine sites you can get to, and um, these lakes are, are pretty spectacular. So, yeah, it's, it's starting to really, really pick up. That's cool. And and you, you have access to the, the roads or is there ATV trails that are in there as well? Um, and there's a little bit of both. So the, some of the local fellows have cut ATV trails into some of the back lakes, um, but it's just literally hundreds of kilometers of, of logging roads that, that aren't used. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's spectacular. That's cool. And yeah. Then, and then Mike Gooley's, he says, uh, do you need reservations or can he just show up? Um, in July and August, we are full. Um, we're not full yet, but we fill up every summer and in the winter time, it's rare that we have room. Like after March break, we start to thin out a bit. Like we're full tonight and it's a Monday night. We were That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, we're running about 90% occupancy in the yeah. winter. Oh, perfect. Now, yeah. is there a season where you stop? Like I was talking to do, uh, Edgewater Park Lodge in Kearney, and they said that yeah. this weekend would be it. And then they get about two weeks, three weeks, and then it goes into ATV like crazy. Yeah, they they get into that ATVing season probably two to three weeks before we can even consider it. So of we're snow. in the snow. Like we've had snow in the bush still the second week of June. Wow. Yeah. So, but that's I mean that's beautiful ATVing at that point because everything's still wet and fresh and. Yeah, it's it's good, but yeah, they can they can start at least two weeks before we can. That's cool. And is it is for the ATV and crowd like Mike would have been talking about snowmobiling? I think in uh, yeah particular um, for the ATV and crowd, is it is it? Do you need a mud pro or can you can you ride a trail quad up there? Trail quad is is all you need. You, in this particular area, you, you have to search out mud. Where uh, oh, okay, good. Mud. It's rock yeah. and it yeah, right on. A lot of sand, sand and, and clay. Um, yeah, not a ton of mud. That you've got to search for. Well, that's good. That's my kind of riding, actually. I don't like cleaning them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, that's cool. And for the rest of the snowmobile season, reservations go, is it best to call ahead? It is. Um, pretty much after next week, we've got room pretty much every night. Guys have got their two or three rides in. So now it's last minute stuff where they've able to make some shift changes or the, the kids hockey or dance is over um, before soccer and T-ball starts. So they might squeeze in that last, that last getaway, that kind of thing. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And then there'll be one, one not available when I'm me and Corey are up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that. Another view of that shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a two, like a 2004 rev. Yeah, that's exactly. Buried. Yeah. yeah. Is that the same orange one that was in, already stuck earlier? 
Yes. I think it is. Yeah. yeah back to that one. Yeah. <laughs> he must be loving it that someone else took the plunge too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they did. They did. Oh, that's cool. Well, it looks like he's smiling. So that's what he that's what he came for. That's exactly what they came for. I'm like that too. I uh, I'd see that, that that area and go, yeah, I think I can do that and jump right in. Is there much hazards in that area? Like, do you are you are you sure that it, it's safe to go in there? As far as no stumps and rocks, like, do you do you map that out to say, hey, go in here, but don't go in here? So, as as a general rule, we send people to lakes um, and say, listen, like, there's so many back lakes. Here's the logging roads. And with hundreds of kilometers of logging roads, you can always find fresh snow right right on the roads. And then once you get onto these lakes, there are no hazards on the lakes. You get some slush, but the, the lakes are always safe. And there's so many of them. That's what you see here. This is a lake right across the road from us. So there's a little cow path that goes in there. You wind yourself in and in you go. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice. splice lake as well. So yeah. Guys are going there and fish and ride sleds. And if that's if that's my wife, I'm not there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I guess so. Like that is a lake. Now that you see it, I thought yeah. it was just an open field kind of thing. It's got it looks like you got a nice hole. Oh, that's behind my shoulder there. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. Yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah. Lots of snow. Yeah. Did you guys have a, like, like I was saying, our area where my cottage is, we didn't have a very good snow year. What was it like up in your area? It snowed at one point. It snowed for 48 hours straight. It never what? stopped. Yeah. Now it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a blizzard, but no. we had snow. Like we were plowed, we plowed snow pretty much around the clock for two days here. Wow. Was yeah. that the one that they had a few weeks ago? It was like maybe two weeks ago they had a dumping. Yeah, we had 35 centimeters of snow. Yeah. So wow. it just, when it came, it just started and it went for about 48 hours. Nothing heavy, but it just, it just kept snowing. Un Uncle Buck said that phone call you had was Corey Brock calling to make a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't he answering? Yeah, and anybody that goes to the Toronto St Snowmobile Show has probably walked by the booth and probably talked to Roger and Mary Jo. I've talked to them in great detail a few years ago. Um, do you miss the shows? Yes, very much. Especially, like, people understand the Snowmobile Show or the Snowmobile and ATV Show. It's a different. If it's it's a different crowd, eh? Like you get the fishermen up here and you get the the hunters, but this this snowmobile and crowd, you can't beat it. Like no. as long as their sled is running, everything's gold. They they're they're away. They've got this massive investment in their sport, and if they're lucky, they get to use it three times a year. Yeah, and, and it's man, I tell you, the snowmobiling crowd—they're the best. They are. They're they're so much fun. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. And that's the thing; it's got to be valuable to you as well as a as a resort owner peeking in on that. I just like talking to the people at the show. It's pretty great. Oh, you it's know. great! Like, like you've snowmobiled for years. Like you've you've seen it all: broken trailers, trucks break down, blown clutches, blown belts, can't find spare parts. Buddy rolls his sled. You've gone through it all. Oh and yeah, every every ride. That that's just last weekend. It, that, it's, true. <laughs> it's true. I've got guys in my shop pretty much every night wrenching on sleds. One guy last year was super creative. Rolled his sled, blew all the plastics off it. It was great. When he was done, he ripped out all of his all of his floor liners and made a complete cowling setup out of my duct tape, zip ties, and his floor mats. It was spectacular. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'd love to see shots of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Having that shop is gold. Like we had a problem with my son's sled up in Sudbury, and it was cold out. Like it was probably minus 30. And we were fixing in the hotel park a lot. And we were thinking like geez, it would be nice to have someone with a garage let us work on this in the garage. You know yeah. what I mean? That's golden. Yeah. It is. That, that's it worth is. the trip to Elk Lake Wilderness Resort right there. Yeah. It's a junky old shop, but I'll tell you, it has saved so many people. 
if you're out of the wind and there's yeah. tools in it, if there's vice grips, sledgehammer and, and, a, and a hacksaw and yeah. some duck, a roll of duct tape and zip ties, we yeah, can it's fix all there. Yeah. yeah. So I just tell people <laughs> if it's three o'clock in the morning, don't knock on the door shops there and it's open and the tools are there. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. Terry Troop Tupa says, "If it, hell, if I only rode three times a year, I'd get out of the sport." <laughs> but it's true; some people don't only go on the big trips, right? Yeah, yeah. Uncle Buck says it's a sickness, and Dominator says we are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the uh, no, it's I love the snow. Like, look at that. What kind of temperature do you get? Do you get the coolness that Kirkland Lake and Cochrane get, or are you a little bit more climatized? Oh no, there. no. It you're was, in that. You're in the cold belt. Oh yeah, yeah. I think the coldest we hit this year was minus. The coldest I saw in my truck was minus forty three. Yeah, I think and, that's the weekend in January. Corey and I were in Kirkland Lake. It was farking cold. Yeah, we had extension cords and our booster packs and heaters running all over camp trying to, to get sleds started. And, you know, I used my tractor and pulled some sleds into the shop and got them heated up. And it was awful. It was awful. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's never fun. And then when you have problems with the sled, it makes it even worse, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's Corey trying to call back again. Tell call him back to leave a message. Yeah. Corey, just leave a message and he'll get to you. <laughs> <laughs> Send us an email, Corey. We'll take it that way. It uh, it actually sounded like Mike Gooley is actually if you if you watch his YouTube channel. <laughs> That's a great sunset shot. Yeah. So is this actually on Elk Lake? Yes, that's that's right out just down from us, right on the river here. Right on. And is are your cottages right on the pond as well? Yes, they are. Yeah. Nice. Right on the right on the river. Nice. There's a good shot. <laughs> that's that same the same. Oh yeah, thing. that's that's a panoramic of it. Yeah, it it's deep. It's it's insanely deep. Now, is it hard right now, or is it still soft and fluffy like that? No, we had that uh, that really light freezing rain. We got about three hours of it. We missed most of it. Sudbury, North Bay, they got it. Um, we got a little bit of a crust. So when you're riding through it, you get that ice that kind of breaks up underneath the snow a little bit. But, yeah, this was before that. Yeah, but you're still pushing through snow like that. Then. Oh yes, there's yeah. just a, a little bit of a firm layer, not not anything that's going to hurt you. No, no. Yeah, same one, same yeah. guys. He, they love that, don't they? Oh yeah. <laughs> What's he's he? Got oh, he's got a shovel there. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what he was holding up in the air there, but yeah. yeah. The track that you see behind him, our guide drove out and threw him the shovel and then zipped around and took the picture laughing at him. Oh, that's funny. What yeah. Was he riding your new sled there, that that Viking, or does he have a, an, an off-trail sled? Oh, yeah, he's got a Scandic. So, he yeah, once he was done here, he laughed, and he just drives in front of them to pack it down, and then they can just they zip right out. But, yeah, he's got a, he's got a Scandic. It's the only thing oh, you can nice. get back in there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Pro Polaris Rob says there's a crust on top. Just ask Renegade X about it. Ha ha. He must have fell through it or something. We're gonna have to have that story. You gotta send me in some pictures, guys. Like, come on. I, I need to hear how that weekend was. You're all chatty with me the weekend before, and now you're not talking to me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, look at that depth. So that is that on the ice as well? No, this <laughs> So this is the little property right next to our place. And the best thing about this is this is my daughter's boyfriend. Never snowmobiled before. So he went out and he got the 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 165, the summit. Yeah, nice. And, yeah. And that was one of his first time snowmobiling. And that's how it ended up. So yeah, that was a spectacular picture. He still hasn't lived that one down. No. He he's got to give her the beans when he gets into that that situation. That that slate can handle it. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. but yeah, that was a rookie mistake. So he hasn't lived it down. Yeah. 
Yeah, like that gives you an idea how deep the snow is right there. Yeah, it that does. Wow, that's higher than the handlebars of the sled. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Renegade X says he's still tired, and Pro Polaris Rob says he just got home last night. Well, that gives him time to get back up here again. Corey Brock says March 26th weekend is a snowmobile sessions Elk Lake group ride. How's that? You got lots of room? Let's do it. Perfect. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Hopefully that uh, pro players Rob and those guys aren't. Ghoulies would be in. He's all over it. He'd be into that. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Look at the steam too. That's a different guy. Is that the yep. the summit? No. Nope. Nice. Oh, that's nope. a different. This is just that's a different guy. Different yeah. Guy. Ghoulie, Ghoulies is in. Book it. Call him with your credit card, Ghoulies. We're going in. Let's go, guys. <laughs> One last rip. That'll be fun. We're, we'll we'll talk about this. But yeah, look at that. Imagine that. We could yeah. just watch Ghoulies get stuck in there, and we'll take lots of video. I'll hold his camera. Did I miss one there? No. Here we go. Those are great you, old sets. Yeah, they are. Do you get a lot of those, or do you do you find guys showing up with new stuff, or is it pretty pretty much a mix? It is absolutely a mix. We get so many people through here that we see it all. It's it's really cool. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. Nothing wrong with them. They changed the world. Those revs chassis. So yes, they did. Yeah. Just fly low popped in. He says, hello, everyone. Ghoulies is in. Greg, Brad Hitchcock says, Greg and I can't cross the border. That'll be next season. We'll scope it out for you this in the com coming weeks, and then we'll get uh, we'll get the big ride next year. Yeah, we had a really good deal going on with uh, with Clear Lake Brewing, but uh, the weather, Mother Nature just said, screw you guys. We're going to bring the rain down. That was that rain you were talking about. You guys run skate. Sudbury yeah. was still decent. Sudbury stayed out of it, but anything south of that was just a mess. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it, but we're looking for places for next year. So you know, yeah. we'll do it. We'll do it upright, and all the Americans can come up and ride with us and drink our good beer and buy our cheap gas. Right. That's right. That's right. They're giving away fuel up here, guys. Giving it away right now. So this is a logging road. Yeah, that's neat. Look at that that rock. Yeah. How do you know when you're like? How do you not get lost on their logging roads? They're not they're not marked or anything, are they? Like, they don't have do they have road signs or street numbers or? They have mile markers or kilometer markers. So okay. In our case, there's two main roads. If guys are on Google Earth and they want to look it up, you find the the sawmill in Elk Lake. And there's two roads. Cook Lake Road runs north to south, and it's kilometer marked. And then at the 10-kilometer mark, it heads from the west to the east, and it's kilometer marked. So if the kilometer marks are going up in sequence, you're going away from town. If they're coming down in sequence, you're coming back. It's really oh, okay. easy. Yeah, yeah it's nice. really easy. Yeah. Nice. Okay, yeah, cool. We, yeah, we have Google Earth here. So before you head out, we pull it up on our big screen TV. We walk you through where everything is and away you go. Yeah, nice. Do you yeah. see, do you run into many people out there or is it, are you pretty much it? Like, it's pretty much us. Like, yeah, if, nice. If you meet somebody out there, it's, it's somebody that is right from town or it, they're from here. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's probably been stuck a few times, this guy, I think. Yeah, we, he's up to his waist deep. Actually, actually that's our guide that's Is standing it? there. Yeah, nice. <laughs> his, I think that might be his sled in the background. Nice, yeah. right on. Oh, he must he must see it all, right? He does. He does. There's a guy with an assault going through there, just loving it. Yeah, yeah. If you got the right sled in there, that would be wicked, man. Oh, he didn't have the right slide, I guess. He got his XCR <laughs> stuck. Yeah. Mike Gooley says, how do the tours work? Do you do tours? Like your guide takes you out? and So our, our guide works at the at the mill in town. So he's available weekends mostly. Um, 
but most of the stuff he does is for fishing. The off-trail guys are adventurous enough that once they see how easy it's laid out on Google Earth, um, most guys don't need a guide. It, it really is that easy. We brushed in a logging road um, ourselves that gets you back there, and you really don't. Yeah, you really don't need a guide. You just picture it in your mind or have a GPS unit. A lot of guys are carrying GPS units now. True. They, True. they pinpoint one spot and they're gold. Is there phone reception up there if you were running like a like a Polaris Ride Command or BRP Go app? No, there is for about the first seven kilometers going back, and then after that, there isn't. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty. It, it's snow. It's like Hansel and Gretel, right? You made the track <laughs> and you follow the track coming back. <laughs> Hopefully, like, it's not snowing like a biatch, right? Yeah. Have, that's have right. you had Have you had anybody that you've had to gone out and get, or you you had to stay open later to because you know they're coming back? You want to know how ironic this is? We've never had that happen to anybody off trail. We've only ever had that happen to people on trail riding. Is that right? That you better awesome. knock on some wood there. Find some wood and and yeah. uh, you know, yeah, give her a exactly. knock. Yeah. No, that's funny. It that's hard to believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Brad Hitchcock says he bought a summit one year and all that did was get me stuck worst. You know what I <laughs> I think it's true because you'd be pushing it more, right? Yeah. Well, that's a, the last year I had my rene my Renegade 800. I was taking chances like crazy, and I got that thing stuck like bad. And Drew was getting fed up because every ride I'd just bury that thing. Only had an inch and a quarter track on it, so it wasn't good in the deep stuff at all. Yeah. And he was like, "Come on, don't do it." I go, "I'm gonna do it. I can make it." But yeah, I didn't make it. Yeah, so oh, I we could get some epic shots like that. That's great. Yeah. Look at that. There's a lookout. That's what I was asking about right there. So, so where's this? That is just right across the river from us. So if you take one of the logging roads that we've brushed in back, um, that's just across the river from us. Is that a pond or a lake or down that's there? A lake. That's a lake yeah. behind it, yeah nice yeah i love that yeah the trees are kind of scrubbed like that that's that's no you know you're getting up north when you see that right yeah exactly another oh there's another big lake and so is that elk lake down there that's the montreal river behind that's that. montreal yeah. river okay yeah oh hey i think we got a bear cave shot here that's the one that's awesome. So that kid, no, did he get the bejeebas scared out of him or what? It, he was a little, a little shocked when he got to the back. Yeah. And how deep is it? Like how far do you got to go in? It's about 75 or 80 feet straight in. Nice. Yeah. So you're in there like it's, it's dark. Like you can't see your head in front of your face once you get about 50 feet in. Like there's nothing. That's yeah. wild. Well, yeah. well, that's the thing. I know with the mica mines, I was telling the guy, um about Matawa and I said you think you've got a bright flashlight until you get into these caves and then it doesn't do squat right yeah. how far is that away from you Gary I think you're probably six hours right how, how far are you from Kirkland Lake uh about an hour and a half drive north of south. Kirkland Lake you're south, south of Kirkland Lake oh yeah. that's even better so yeah you're you're probably six hours from us then it's five and a half six hours that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. And that's saying way better snow conditions, I think. Yeah. So you get the, the, mag, the magic elixir. You know what I mean? The, the, the secret sauce. It's like a Tug Hill type area that you don't yeah. know why, but you get all the snow. Yeah. Yeah. This and is a little family excursion. Family yeah, you get lots of families up there too. We get tons. It's surprising how many. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. I like that. That's good. Yeah. We're starting to get a lot of all girl groups in now too. Hey, there you go. Yeah. We, we ride like girls. Does that count? Um, well, if I rode like the one girl that comes here every year, I think most guys would be happy. That's all oh, for sure. That's, oh that's, God, that's you can't say that anymore, right? She's unreal. 
Victoria. And yeah, she always brings four or five friends with her. And, and yeah, she's, she's unbelievable. Yeah. Now I know you answered this, but Michael England is asking is a lodge on the OFSC trail system. Yes, it is. Right on. There you go. So you got the OFSC trail system and then you've got, which is 258 kilometers to go to Cochrane, which is a good ride for a day. And then you've got 400 kilometers of off trail, uh, riding to go. So, yeah. Yep. Another pictures great shot. Right. No, pictures wouldn't do it justice, right? Oh, there's a great uh, trail side lunch. Yep. Yep. So that's the guys do that a lot instead of, you know, coming back or trying to go somewhere for lunch. They'll come in and, you know, get some sausages and buns from us, buy those, and out they go. And like I said, we've got some fire pits set up on some islands on some back lakes and things. And yeah, it's it's spectacular. Is there wood out there for the people or do you have to cut it or bring it out there with you? A lot of times we'll just give guys some, some kindling from here, get, get them started. Yeah. And usually a, a backpack full of wood out of here and they'll just drop it off where they're going to eat. In this case, um, the guys just took a few logs from the shop here and litter them. That's what they did. Nice. That's awesome. I love that. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? It does. It make me hungry now. That was our guide. And he's he just, stuck. He, he stuck. He took had someone take that picture because he was like, that's the first time this year I've been stuck. And he's in there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And that's a heavy sled. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Waist. He's he's above <laughs> his waist deep. He's higher than his <laughs> belly button. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So that's getting onto the lake, I take it, because there's a guy out there on the lake. Yeah. yeah, it is. Wow. Oh, this isn't this is an epic shot. Look at that. Oh, I didn't know I said that's that's a nice one. It is. So that is that the trail? It says eco something. Eco research center. Is that what Resource it says? Center. Yeah, that's Resource. down the river from us. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's a great shot. There's, is that another cave or the same one? We that's, that's the same the, kid, isn't that's it? The same one, yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah, he's giving her. Looks like somebody was giving it in front of him too. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see that? Yeah. That's the same shot. I might repeat these. Oh, look at the kid. He's. The, the kid decided he's going to jump off the trail and right on right up to his elbows in the yeah. snow. So oh, that awesome. monument is on the way up that lookout. You said, oh, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. That's that's on the way up to that. Is it in a nookshook? Is that what that is? Yeah, there's a guy that has a, a mining claim up there. And he was up there doing some exploration work. And he was like, ah, I'm going to build one. So he took his excavator and stack some rocks together nice that's awesome well people yeah. love seeing that and getting pictures by him and stuff and yeah oh there's a kid he's got a little mini z yep I like that yeah he was in here today actually with with his dad he's riding an 800 now what yep that's that cool was, that one was three years ago that one he went yeah. from that right straight to an 800 Oh, seriously, that's great. Good kid, right? He's giving her there. Yeah. You know what? If you drive him smart, then there's no problem with that. That's right. You know? Oh, oh another shore lunch, ice fishing. Yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? What kind of fish have you got in that lake? There, That was speckled trout that we seen there. Yeah, there was splake, um, brook trout, and lake trout. Are the nice. Three big, yeah. And how long does it take you to catch something like that? Are, are they are like your if arms get tired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's deep forever. Yeah. I, I wash lures. I don't really catch yeah. the fish, right? Yeah. Um, if you're with our guide, um, it's rare that you don't catch fish, like very rare. Um, nice. If you're going to go by yourself, it, it's sort of a crapshoot whether you're going to catch or not. 
Um, I can point you to the kind of the areas on the lakes to fish, but when you're with him, you catch fish. Nice. Yeah. There he is, smile like a champ. Oh, yeah. What kind of 800 did he get? Did he get an Arctic cat? He did, yeah. He did? Oh, that, why would you do that to your son? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> That's the other thing. great thing about the sledding group, eh? Like, the razzing oh. everybody takes, it's unreal. Oh, for sure. For sure. I'm usually, the, I'm usually at the brunt of it, but since it's my show, I can say whatever I want. That's right. You know. Yeah, these guys, after this episode, they they come back every year. Is that right? That's great. Uh, yeah. Well, look at all that fish. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a really good day. And you have you had any celebrities come up and stay with you guys? Uh, with uh, Tal Labignan for yep. fish. He's been here. Um, had a couple of NHL guys come up and, and stay, but, um, that's, that's about it. Yeah. It's usually the diehards that are coming up, right? It this really is. Year. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's snow. Wow. Yeah. Some more fish more fish how long would those be were they are they 16 inch are they 12 inch are they smaller oh, well, there's a that, that'll tell you those are beer can yeah, spots those are beer cases so that's a, that's a that's a 12 that's a case of beer length yeah that's awesome yeah, well, yeah you can't you can't, you can't lie about that no you can't unless it was a case of red bull it's a flat of red bull <laughs> I, mean, I don't think you get many of those drinkers up there not too many, no. No. Is that the guide's sled that they're eating off of one of theirs? It is. No, yeah. that's one of that's his sled. This there, you got to get Odie the sled and car guy sled there. With the big box on the back, we could eat off it like that. It's like a table. Yeah, it is. And as far as being like when you're not on the OFSC trail, when you're in these backcountry lakes. Is it okay to take a beer out to enjoy uh, a trail side? Like, or is there, are they patrolled? Like, how does that work? Just have to follow the, the legislation with as far as drinking and driving, right? So, yeah. 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 That's, that's it. I mean, yeah. We all snowmobile. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great shot. But the, uh, Look at the fire they've got built into the side of the hill. I love that. Yeah, they they pretty much it's funny. They came up to ride. They these guys were hardcore riders. And they got to this back lake across from us here and they were there for 3 days. They would go out, sit, light a fire, do some fishing, rip around the lake for 20 minutes and go back to their fire and then they'd have to come back to the cottages because they needed some hydration. Yep, for sure. So, so they'd come back for some hydration and zip back across and sit there. And yeah, they did it for three days. Love it. Yeah. That's a way to enjoy it, especially with the sun out like that, especially if it was late season and you get the warm sun and yeah. Yeah. This was a different trip that they did. Yummy. That, that stuff looks amazing. Yeah. Could you have someone catch fish for you while you're out riding? When you come back, they can cook you shore lunch. How do you set that up? I'm not sure. I'll try and figure that one out. That would be awesome. This you is know? the trail right across from our, cot our cottages. That's beautiful. That's OFSC, is it? That is, yes. Yeah, that's nice. The, that's the A trail right in Elk Lake. Here we go. They're asking about side-by-sides and ATVs. Right so, on. Yeah. yeah, these guys came up a uh, month and a half ago. Yeah. And they, they had a blast. Full cab, you know, all windows tracked side by sides. Yeah, full stereo GPS. It was impressive. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's trying to get buried there. Yeah, and he, he didn't. Yeah, that's neat. It climbed it and climbed it without with oh. no trouble whatsoever. 
A good lake shot there. Yeah. That would be wild. Like you could go anywhere with that thing, couldn't you? Yeah. He said like they, they actually tried because they had two of them. They tried to get it stuck. He said we couldn't. And we, he goes, we, le we legitimately tried to get it stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how often do the OFSC trails get groomed at your place? Um, we're quite fortunate. We've got uh, a groomer that operated that's incredible. And they groom this trail about three times a week. And how far do they go from your place? Like how far do they groom? Do they groom like Kirkland Lake South to you or do they groom right through to Cochrane? So the, the groomer that runs out of here, he grooms from here halfway to New Liskard. Then yeah. he, heads, he heads north out of here um, up towards Englehart and Charlton. And then he grooms west of us out to Beauty Lake Road, which is – it's a major logging road, but it's also part of the 107 C snowmobile trail. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We have, a, we have a couple of questions in there again. How long will snow last? And uh, Roger had answered this already. High flying aerial. It's uh, April 3rd. He thinks they'll be open till. So yeah. that's, uh, that's insane. And um, the, uh, yeah, Google says at least April. So that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. Corey Brock says Gary will be the first real celebrity. Really? There you go. Yeah, I don't know which Gary he's talking about, but <laughs> yeah, I'd let you hang a picture of me on the wall, I guess, and autograph it. No, we'd have we'd have to work something out though. Yeah. So this, I love this picture. So three years ago, a massive forest fire went through, way back across from us. And when you zoom in, you can see, and when you get yeah. back there on up on some of these ridges and, and you look at it and the utter devastation, um, it's really awesome to see. And then when you see it, when you're ATVing in the spring and it's all green and all the green is starting to come back and all the shrubbery. Yeah. Mother nature is pretty impressive. Oh yeah. Like I, I know the place that do controlled burns just to get the growth back in the floor. Like it's, it's insane how fast it can recover. Yeah. Um, your trees aren't that old because they probably have been burnt by lightning strikes in the past. But is that the fire that was huge that, uh, I think it went down to Bing Inlet, didn't it? No, nope. Ours was oh, way bigger. This one was 35,000 hectares. Wow. Yeah. That's it crazy. Was massive. Yeah. Brad Hitchcock says, Gary, those headlights are the bomb I got from you. Thank you. Yeah, B2 stingers are the real deal, man. As my daughter says, they're legit. Yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, that's great. I'd love to see stuff like that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. There'd be some trees to climb there for me to get some good aerial shots too. Yeah. With, with the drone. I mean, climbing trees. Um. Yeah, look at that. That's amazing. That's a nice picture. Yeah. Tips up for the weekend right there. And if you if you don't think you've seen enough snow shots yet, we got this one. I, I think it'd be I don't I think instead of digging this guy out, his sled is buried. I mean buried. I think I'd just take the three handfuls of snow that you'd need to cover it right up and leave it till spring. Yeah. He is just yeah. all you see is like the the gas cap and part of the top of the side panel. <laughs> and the, the, the guy on the right that looks like he's, I don't know, he's, he's yeah, actually like, standing. What? <laughs> like he's in the snow up to his shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think that guy that's looking at the sled is on the ski. Yeah. Yeah, he totally is. Like in the other guy too, right? Like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Brad Hitchcock says that looks like, like my summit. Maybe that's where Brad's summit <laughs> went. <laughs> it's in yeah. there somewhere. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Another great panoramic shot. Yeah, that, that just looks like it's in the mountains of BC, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. I mean, you know, no one can say they've got snow like that, but yeah, it's no, but it it that is it, impressive it how like deep it. it is. It does, yeah. yeah. What is the best time of year to come up to see you guys? Is it pretty consistent throughout the winter or is there, is there a 
peak where you go like this is the ultimate you know time to ride yeah if people are booking um and their vacation time is limited we tell them don't book until the second week of january like you're coming up to ride you want to you want all the the experience you want maybe to get some off trail you want good trails mid-january but february february where it's at like that's why we're full yeah Yeah, that's right yeah yeah and if you're talking about booking for february generally when do you have to make the call we were probably 50 percent full for february back in the end of december yeah so as soon as the season Early. starts like Early, basically yeah. when you do the snow and you'll be back to the snow i show this year you must be yeah. booking solid then right oh yeah 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 because uh, i remember meeting mary joe it's too bad she she's working tonight because the uh we had a hoot we laughed our asses off at the snowmobile show yeah yeah it was a good time there's a good shot from the bars behind the bars of the sled yep nice yeah. So is, is his sled sitting in there somewhere or is he just standing there? I heard my name, so I thought I'd come say hi. Oh, hey, hi. how are you, Mary Jo? <laughs> I'm a hot mess. I'm a hot mess because I go. just finished service, so. Well, I heard it was steak night, so you're pretty busy tonight. <sighs> yeah, really busy. <laughs> I smoke in here, but. And, uh, of course, I scheduled the podcast yeah. right right for dinner service time. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah, nice. Per- well, you don't really have a say in that, but I'm happy to have you on. This has just been <laughs> fun, you know. The uh, w- When you cook steak, are you do, you do you do it over coals or over a barbecue, or do you? Uh, no. do you- we have this amazing oven that will basically do anything we ask it to. It's, com- it's totally computerized. Nice. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's called a rationale. It's really really cool. And we bought that when we decided to expand our food service because we have a really small kitchen and and it kind of does everything. It's not a microwave or anything like that. It's an actual oven, but it takes 250 diagnostics per second. So every time uh, you're cooking something, it's constantly monitoring the size, the moisture, the humidity, the whatever, all of that stuff. So well, the smart shock, the smart shocks of cooking. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right there. And uh, so, but a lot of people tonight asked me if it was barbecued because it doesn't, it, it tastes just like barbecue steak. Wow, that's good. Well, it's, it seems to smoke like barbecues too. It does. I, I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought Roger was back on the stogies again. You, you know, <laughs> I know he told you he quit smoking cigars, but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'll let you guys get to it because I'm cleaning up. But nice Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks. Yeah, good seeing you again. Come on, <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Good shots. Oh, and you have your own ice ice walls here. Yeah, so this is a just just off the 107 C Trail. This is called Canyon Lake, and there's a yeah. little trail that runs down in there. And um, if you look at Facebook, people are posting pictures a lot of of this. It's it's gorgeous in there. It literally it's a canyon. Yeah, nice. That's beautiful. That is. It is. And is that what it looks like right now? Like, is it like this every year? Or is... It's like this every year. And this is, this is early on. Um, so it's, it's bigger than that now. I bet. Right. I, the ice caves are really good this year. It, it's uh it was a good time to go see them. So I can imagine yours are pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty wild. Is that one of the cabins there we're looking at on the right? It is. Yeah. Nice. So you do have a nice view of the lake. Sleds park right out front. Great. Oh yeah, you park. You park right at your right at your cottage. Yeah. Now, is there a common area for like for gathering, or you just kind of everybody kind of keeps themselves and stays in their cottages? Or there's the pavilion out the back, which has a fire pit and and things like that. Um, but we found that you know what, people ride so hard here that by the time we feed them, they go into a food coma. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was just going to say that. You're probably sleeping within an hour of getting back, right? Yeah. The one complaint we, we almost constantly get is that we serve too much food. Yeah, nice. Good to yeah. know. Yeah. So. Well, you had me at breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> And this oven, I got to see it now. Like, come it on. Is, 
oh my god it's impressive it's really something like they said uh, would you like a porsche or would you like this new oven <laughs> yeah i'd be hard pressed to to not take the oven yeah that's right exactly <laughs> awesome there's a good group of sleds right there yeah the do the do crew there and you got one one yamaha on the back looking angry at everybody you notice that eh? <laughs> yeah. so that that kind of looks like a newer cabin is it we've recited most we've uh we we rebuilt one we tore one down and rebuilt it so it's got in floor heat and a loft and it's it's gorgeous and then we've recited six six others we've got four left to go nice so that's it's nice to see that you put everything back into the the business so to speak right well you have to yeah it's all about experience oh this one here this look at how steep that is incredible <laughs> it's almost straight up and down how's that how are they not falling off that without wall it's magic it is isn't it yeah that's a great shot you just get the these are just uh, photos that people have sent you just saying, yeah, Hey, I had a great I, time. I, yeah, check I this out. Any of these. No, these are all just That's guest wild. photos. Yeah. yeah, another good shot. Yeah, that's just coming back onto the groom trail. Yeah, look at that. I don't think I've seen snow like that yet around where I've ridden yet this year, you know. Okay. I didn't get this shot. It was a, was this an accident? There we or? go. That there we go. That's a good one. Is this it Mary Jo's cupcakes or what? It must be somebody's birthday. I don't know how that got in there. Yeah. Well, there's some there's some nudies too. We're gonna get to. It, it kind of looks like you as well. I don't know. Could very well be. <laughs> Just blasting it. Yep. Oh, people generally ride at night there or they kind of roll up the carpet at night? No, we've got two really nice short destinations at night. So one where those guys were on that lake fishing, I said it was yep. across the road. That's about a 10, 15 minute ride in. Um, so you just simply cross the road and you follow this little trail and it's beautiful back in there. So guys will... Uh oh. Hopefully we'll get him back. Mary Jo must be putting an Amazon order in or something right now. We'll see if we get him back. There he is. I heard something. Are you back now? There we go. I said Mary Jo must have been putting an Amazon order in or something. Oh my God. That's probably true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you said they go like 10, 15 minutes in on that trail. Yeah, these are some incredible pictures. If you guys have any questions for them, uh, just uh, let me know. Did you guys look at the weather? Corey said it's above temp next 14 days. I don't know whether it's like that up there. I sure hope not if they're thinking they're going to be open till April, but we'll see what happens. I'll just keep scrolling through the photos here. He's got, uh, we're at 94 of 130, but let me know if you see uh, anything of interest here and uh, we can always, go. we can always scroll back to it. Yeah, there you go. He's back. Corey's laughing. <laughs> yeah, so this is just a windy trail. Yep. Anyways, I'll finish. I think we lost me. At, then there's a lake across from us. The yeah. Guys open to at night, light a fire, sit on the lake and watch the stars and stuff. That's that's really neat. There's nice short little rides to do after dark. Oh, cool. Well, that's the thing. The stars up there are incredible. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. When you get it, when you get the right night, it's uh, there's there's no comparison. Another good shot. Yeah, I can't believe the snow. Yeah, 
it kind of caught us off guard the number of people that are coming to do the off trail riding. I knew it was big. Um, you talk to people at the show, and then you watch what the manufacturers are building. Yeah, and that would that's what we were talking to Jeff McGurr from Yamaha, mm-hmm. and, and he was like, "Yeah, this is this is what people want, and that's what that's what everybody's building." And we're like, "Well, we can do that here." So we started to advertise and promote it a bit more, and it's you know what it stops? It stops people from going along the edge of the trail and finding an open field and going, Hey, that looks neat. Yeah. Next true. You know, trails are closing. Yeah. And I think it's something that, that, that sled manufacturers and the OFSC should, should like a guy like you because you're giving that opportunity w- without getting the landowners involved, you know? Yeah. You know, like it's, it's God's country and you can ride wherever you want and, and you don't have to worry about shutting down a trail or anything like that. And, and yeah, you do see a lot of purpose built sleds for exactly this type of riding. It's nice that you, you cater to both. So we've got a, an exceptional club. Um, and I mentioned to them that perhaps we could explore opening up a different trail, an OFSC trail, but that leads to all sorts of off trail riding. And they were like, that's brilliant. So they actually came out. There was eight of them that came out the other day. And they went out to explore to see if they can put a business case together to put this 50-kilometer loop in that leads to literally hundreds of kilometers. That way, if people want to off-trail ride, they can ride here on the OFSC trail, and then they can go. It, they can head off this groom trail and hit hundreds of kilometers and get their fill and be able to use these beautiful sleds. Exactly. Exactly. I love that idea. Right. And then as far as cans go, if you're riding off trail in your area, it won't matter. Like you don't have any rules on that as long as you, you don't go on the OFSC trail. Right. Right. And that's, yeah. that's kind of the thing, right? That's cool. So, Yeah. Yeah, that's the sign on the A trail in front of our place. Right on. Hot food, warm cabins, and premium gas. Yeah. You have always have a lot of stock on gas, so there's no issues with uh, with ever being out, that kind of thing. Nope. They'll deliver 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I guess that's the best the the benefit of being a little bit south, right? Um, it is, but we also have an exceptional fuel supplier. Um, and they put in a brand new 4,500 liter tank and they, yeah, they come in, um, on Wednesdays, fill us up and then they check with us Friday before they shut down to make sure that we're full for the weekend. So yeah, we've never even come close to running out of fuel ever. Nice. That's awesome. Do you have to go and measure it or do they actually come by? They just drop in and go. I'm pumping gas every day, all day long. Uh, so yeah, you know so. the leaders you're using and that type of thing. Yeah, and I just actually I just Facebook message the driver and I just tell him where we're at and he's like, okay, right on. Yeah, and Perfect. and the price. I mean, you see the price of gas right now, and I mean we're kind of middle of nowhere and we're sitting at two hundred five for a premium. And I know in town that's not five, bad at all. Yeah, right. So yeah, let me tell you something. I paid two ten a liter in Baysville two weeks ago. Yeah, we're at yeah we're at two hundred five right now. Yeah, that's good. Don't raise it when we come up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's got his ice yeah. fishing sleigh on the back of that one. Yeah, that's going into the, the lake just across the road from us. Sweet. So you're right over that little hill there, are you? Yeah, pretty much. Just a logging road shot. Yeah, That's nice. Cook Lake Road. Yeah. Man, you can have fun blasting through that because not groomed and yeah. nice deep snow on it. That'd be a yeah. blast. Yep. Yeah. OFSCA trail again. Yeah, that's nice. So that's beautiful because that's an old rail bed. And it's my, it's, it's fantastic. Is it so? It's straight, flat, 
just yeah. give her the beans 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Not, not a kilometer over, right? No. No. <laughs> That's awesome. Just find a spot and drop a yep. line, right? Drop a line. It's great. It's funny to see the guys with the long tracks that should be out like shredding snow and there they are ice fishing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, exactly. Just killing time. Yeah. Killing time catching. How long do people generally stay? Is it weekend guests or is it, is, does it vary? Do you get it, people coming up for longer stays? Yeah, we do. We've got people now that are coming because where we're situated, um, the day loops out of here are pretty fantastic. You can do Kirkland Lake in a day. You do Liskard in a day. And then um, if you plan your day out really well, you head from here over to Alriki Lodge, fill up with gas, up to Timmins, stop for a, a really light, light lunch, then down to Kirkland Lake for a, you know, but you got to make those two stops. It's a long, long trip. But once you make those, those two stops and stretch and get out, that's a beautiful ride. But Sweet. it's you're gone all day. Like you leave early and you're back seven 30 at night and you're ready for supper. And, but that's a beautiful ride. Yeah. Now with, with, with supper, is it made to order? So if you do like, I mean, I'm sure you have some guys that want to eat at five. You have some guys that get six. Like if you come back at eight 30, is it, do you still cook supper at that time? Like how does that work? Or do you have a limit? No, nope, there's no limit. Everybody has different, different times we try to we try to keep our meal service between 5 30 and 8 if we can because by yeah. the time we get out of the kitchen like joe's in there now cleaning up and she'll be another you know another hour um but i mean we've all blown belts and had things go wrong so oh when for sure back, yeah when you get back and as far as the menu um we have a fixed menu for every night and we work around any dietary restrictions. So if you've got gluten allergies or whatever, then we just, we work around that. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Can't get enough of these, uh, these stuck shots, you know, <laughs> no. actually this guy's probably not stuck. He's probably just parked right for a photo. I don't know. He, he's leaning against that, that shrubbery. Pretty yeah, good. Truly. <laughs> yeah. I like it. What's the forecast like over the next few weeks up there? Is it does it look good, promising in your area, or are you going to get the warm up that we're getting here? Yeah, we're supposed to get up to plus nine uh, on Thursday. I think it is. Um, it shouldn't affect us. They're grooming tonight, and they're going to put all the groomers out tonight and again tomorrow to pack everything nice and flat. And then we're supposed to get some snow afterwards. So that's good. Yeah, they're going to leave it. They don't think it'll affect them. There's probably close to three feet of packs, pack snow on the trails. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's so. the thing. If people, if people stay off when it's nine, too, it'll help, right? Yeah. Do they typically close the trails like when it gets like that for a day or whatever they need to to, to help maintain no. that? No, they can't up in this area because everybody everybody's traveling through. Um, like we've got tonight, we've got five different groups in that are either coming, heading for Sudbury or North Bay that have already been up in Cochrane or Timmins. So if you close those trails, they're stuck. So yeah. They don't, yeah. They don't close trails in this area because it's all transitional traffic. So unless yeah. they have to, they never close them. Oh, that's right. Is this is this your picture? That was, that was in the photos. That's part of the birthday thing, I think. We I'm not sure on. what that is. Yeah, like it, the hammer and tongs. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where that came uh, from. It was in your know. photos, so maybe of it's a, maybe, it was. Mary, maybe Mary Jo. It's an inside joke. She probably sent yeah, that. She probably did. <laughs> Ro yeah. Roasting her friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the snow on one of our cottage decks. What a view, too. Wow. Yeah. 
Where does the sun? The well, that's the sun setting right there. That's dynamite. Yeah. Yeah, there's the cabins are nice. They're big. They are big. They are big. I'm, I'm glad we got outside shots them because it's hard. To, you can see that they're big on the inside, but you can't get an idea until you see sleds park tip to rear, and yeah. it's the same size, right? Yeah. There's another nice uh, bass. That's yeah. That's a summer uh, lot, yeah. a summer shot. Yeah, yeah. We put some summer shots in because I, you had sent me a folder of summer shots. I went. These are yeah. dynamite. I just took th three or four of them just to because we're getting to the end of the season. Some people might go, oh, you know what? And then, then they're thinking, you know what? I'd like to go away fishing in early in the year, and that's a typical bass that you'd catch. That's not. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's not small. It's not big, but it's uh, you'd probably catch a hundred of those in a day if you wanted to, right? And that's yeah. on a fly rod too. Yeah. Now, are these boys like? Are they? Do they have a fishing show or something? I noticed that it was a name. Yeah, these are buddies. It's a long story, so we won't get into it. But I met them at a bar in Toronto, and we just—I mean, we like to drink, and we got hooking up, and they do this podcast, and. We invited them up and that uh see uh oh we lost him again but you guys get the story on that one yeah the, he sent uh i think that was the three pictures that i shown there the of these guys fishing but the uh there was a whole folder full of amazing like really professionally shot um photos of these two guys fishing look dynamite <laughs> Corey says G give your shit straight lol but yeah i love i love views like this with the rock in the background sleds all lined up looks like a shot from the michigan outlaws Oh, we totally lost Roger now. There's a nice shot of the sunset. That's probably the backcountry stuff too. Hopefully Roger tries to come back in. But yeah, someone asked if I ordered a, uh, a new sled. And yeah, I got the same one as Corey. I got the uh, black, which I'm going to do my wrap on it. Um, XRS. I went with the XRS with a 10 and a quarter inch gauge and uh, smart shocks this year. And it's what I should have ordered last year and I didn't. And Corey let me get some seat time on his and I love it. And I, I rode with uh, Mike uh, from Sled 519 and he had the smart shocks and we were kind of comparing what my sled was doing and the real junky trails and what his sled was doing. And for an old guy like me, smart shocks are the real deal, man. So I'm looking forward to riding that. Uh, and I was one of the last people to order them from Energy Power Sports with the with the full package. So I'm looking forward to that next year. I can't wait. That's going to be a dynamite sled. I love my Renegade X that I rode this year. I don't have very, very, very few complaints with that thing. Um, that's a sled that would be a keeper. But when I seen the Gen 5, you guys can say what you want about the look of them. Uh, but when I seen it, I loved it because I love the Rev XS. I like the look of the links and it's kind of like the two of them, the best of both of them combined, but that new gauge, man, it, I, I like the blizzard that came out, but you couldn't get the gauge on it. I would have probably went with a blizzard, but you couldn't get the gauge on it. And then I went, you know, I should just do the smart shocks and, uh, and go. So, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say if I was rich, I'd be riding. Screw Gary. That's for sure. That's true. If I didn't have to do this, I should be riding, right? 
we had a good weekend up north. The the, uh, the snow was incredible. It's like it was sad to leave yesterday. Drew had to get right back to to uh, university um, mid afternoon because he had a full schedule last night and today. And uh, so he just came down for the day. So it was incredible just to get out for a day. I'm glad he was able to make it Saturday. We stayed Saturday night, put on crazy, crazy mileage. I rolled 3,008 kilometers on on Bullwinkle. So uh, I, I don't think his season's done yet. So hopefully, uh, especially after the dental work, it'd be a shame to retire him now. Got to get him back on the trail one more time. Do you guys have money these uh, these ice walls that you see in this picture here in your area? Dominator, what do you think? Look at this shot down the lake. Man, I wish Roger was on to see these. He's missing out on all the fun. Another ice shot. Looks like the same group of sleds there. Dominator says, we do not have those. Oh, I'm sure they do. I think the UP is just like uh, just like this area. For those that were waiting, I launched the part two of the, uh, the Sudbury trip with Corey Brock and Shannon on uh, at... 4.45 today, so you can go on there after the show and catch that. It was pretty fun. We get to hear Shannon trash talk and see the Pickerel River Bridge and see a couple guys walking the trail that were kind of un, uh, unbeknownst to us what they were doing. Yeah, the fishing at Elk Lake Wilderness Resort looks amazing. But I think it's one of those things you either got to do the ice fishing or the or the snowmobiling. Like I got into a phase where I was doing ice fishing and no sledding. And then now I go sledding and you get the investment in the snowmobile. And it's like, you don't want to spend the day out in a nice hut. You want to be out in the trails riding. This guy is right up, right up to his waist stuck. Sled sideways. That'll be Corey when he gets there. And we got the, uh, this guy knows what he's doing. He's putting on a clinic. Brad Hitchcock says he loves his smart shocks. I'll never go without them until they make something better. I agree. I can't believe it. What do you ride mostly with, uh, Brad? Do you ride in sport or do you ride in comfort? I think I'd be putting them in comfort for most of the time and hitting sport when it's really firmed up. We didn't get to hear Roger tell us he was going to give us a free stay. Of course, I know. I'm going to have to phone him and bug him about that one. We used to get snow like that in Wisconsin 20 years ago, but not anymore. That's what Dominator says. We don't get snow like that here either much anymore. Like they're in a, they're in a nice pocket. I've heard lots of stories about Elk Lake Wilderness Resort, and it's like no one will have snow, but they're guaranteed to have it. It's almost like the Tug Hill type phenomenon. Probably more than Tug Hill gets too. And then this was the last picture he sent in. I, I threw that in there for a summer photo of them sitting drinking beer on the on the floating trampoline out at the edge of the resort, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that was uh, that was a fan photos for tonight. So now you're just stuck with me. So you know what I'll probably do is just call it a call it a show. And uh, don't forget to send me in fan photos. Uh, for Thursday night to fan photo at mudbrads.com. I'm going to be on Mike's snowmobile lovers podcast, which if you, if you go on YouTube and search vintage snowmobile lovers, it'll come right up on YouTube. And also to, uh, he's, it, I think he streams it to Facebook at the same time, but it'll be a good show. I just was running behind last week and I didn't make it on. It was uh, going to be too, too sketchy. So uh, he said, just come on next week. And that's what we did. We, we put it off to this week. So I'm going to be ready to go with all the guns blazing for that. So make sure you tune in and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat. We'll get you guys in the chat there. 
send me in your vintage snowmobile pictures and, and we'll make sure that um, we get you guys on air. But you know what? Since he's gone and since, uh, since I got nothing to talk about, <laughs> what we'll do is we'll just uh, roll the credits and, uh, and away we go. So thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in tonight. And, uh, oh, I think he's trying to connect. Let's see if we can get him back in. We might be all right. There he is. He's back. Hey. I went through all the photos without you. Oh, perfect. Yep. Per yeah, we, we did all the photos that and we kind of made up our own stories with them too. Uh, they're probably better than my stories. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've been great. So no, I was just gonna end the show. I was gonna uh but uh, if you want to just give a last goodbye to everybody, uh, Renegade X says thanks for a great show. Great to meet Roger. Looks like an awesome place, he says. Uh they it looks like an awesome place they have in Mike Gooley says good night, guys. And uh, um, Gary, do you have at least a teaser for next week's snowmobile session show? I don't. I don't have anything planned. I'm running by the seat of my pants, you know, right now. So, yeah, the, uh, yep. So, yeah, awesome show as always. Thanks, Dominator says. Yeah. So, what what's on tap there? Corey said we didn't even get a chance to have, uh, have Roger give Gary a free night's weekend stay in a couple weeks. <laughs> Luckily it froze again. Oh, did it? Oh, there you go. Perfect. No, I'd, yeah. So if anybody wants to get in touch, make sure you check out uh, Elk Lake Wilderness Resort or Elk Lake Wilderness dot com on uh, on the internet. Absolutely, would love to have you. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, let's talk about that, and uh, and I'll roll the credits, and away we go. If anyone has any questions, Perfect. just throw them down in the comments below the video, and uh, we'll make sure we get them to to Roger. So. Thanks for awesome. your time Thanks tonight too. I know you. Had, no, I know you had a busy night, so thank you. Just if you want to wait till after the credits roll, we can chit chat and away we go. But uh, yeah, flying high aerial says see you next year, perhaps. Thanks, guys. Uh, great show. Awesome. Chris Barber says Elk Lake looks awesome. Chris Barber is saying, oh yeah, I think you've got a couple of new fans here. Yeah, for sure. And they're all lighting up. So I'm gonna roll the credits and we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Thanks again, Roger. This is great. Thanks, Gary. Great show. It's a journey for life.